a few disclosures. Uh, for the, the, my comments today are based on three years of observations as I've uh, traversed the country talking about the peaking of world oil production. I've spoken to elected officials and policymakers and the public, and um, and so these are some of the the, the observations that I've made. Um, I'd also like to disclose that I serve on two nonprofit boards, the Association for the Study of Peak Oil and also Post Carbon Institute, which is located in Northern California. And, and I thank Jerome for his, uh, all of his great posts on the oil drum. It's something I cannot get out of bed without reading first. Uh, the oil drum, energy bulletin, uh, global public media, there are just some great energy resources out there. And without the internet, I never would have gotten energy smart. Um, so I think America is at this crossroads between bliss and dead end. Half of us believe in bliss, that things will go on just as they are because they always have. And then the other half, I read a lot of them on the oil drum, who believe this is the end of the earth. And I think that there is definitely some, uh, hap some middle ground here. Let's see if I can figure. I'm an Apple user, so I, I, get, I get in front of a PC and I don't. Well, the down button is missing. Um, <laughs> so maybe... Is, space? Space. Yeah, but I hit it and it didn't do anything. In the space. I tried the right button. In but you know, left is always better. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay, I, I was at, uh, okay, the, the click button. Um, I was in Ireland last September at the um, ASPO Ireland conference and listened to the first energy czar of this country, James Schlesinger, uh, speak, and he said that conceptual, conceptually the battle is over, the peakists have won. Uh, that was really nice to hear from somebody uh, who, who was so influential in Washington, but um, the reality is, and I'm sorry, the click is this one? Yeah. Ah, there. no, wrong way. Maybe other click? Okay. Ah, there we go. It reminded me of the U.S. Yes, Abraham Lincoln and a president who was declaring victory. I knew this was not victory, that we had still had a long way to go to, to make people realize that, um, that it, it wasn't still bliss. And in fact, I was pleased that later on in, his con in this uh, presentation by Schlesinger, he said that Americans have to be hit over the head with a two-by-four. Um, that is absolutely correct. The only reason that this room has anybody in it is because you're now paying over $4 a gallon. The shock to me is that this room isn't standing room only because this is the most critical issue the nation faces today. And, and yet, um, this, is, this is all we get. So, uh, so everyone, the question of the day is now what? More drilling, more invasions, more ethanol, more technology, more subsidies, more mandates. Actually, all of those are just more of the same, and we don't need more of the same. We can continue on more of the same and, can, and drill another 1.5 million holes in Texas alone. I took this, I was in Austin last December, um, attending my nephew over here. Michael Weber teaches at UT Austin, does a great energy workshop. And as I flew out of Austin, I took a picture of all these um, drill drilling sites um, down below. We can blow off every top of every mountain in the country, which of course contaminates every stream. Uh, we can starve two billion people who live on less than two dollars a day because we're now, um, our, our food prices have risen. Uh, Seventy-five percent of the, the increase in food prices due to our ethanol. We can dig and drill more faster, uh, more and faster just to stay in place. I love this. This is called Mad Max and this is how we drill coal. Um, and we can consume all the water and all the natural gas that Canada has so that we can pump it into our um, SUVs uh, for the unconventional oil that we get out of the tar sands. And it's all so we can hang on to this wonderful quality of life that we have. Isn't it wonderful? Don't we love all those hours we spend circling our neighborhoods trying to find that exact house um, so that Johnny can play with Billy and those wonderful um, trucks that uh, young males drive around in. I don't get it. And you've seen this. You've seen this chart. But what you haven't seen are these two little bars down here, um, the the white bar and that pink bar. A couple of years ago, there was this all this buzz in the news because they'd found this big this big find down in um, down in the Gulf of Mexico called Jack Two, and it really I'd say something vulgar, but it's being taped. Um, and the uh, the white bar it uh, represents the lowest, uh, pr actually probably what will be. Um, gotten out of that, that's about three billion barrels. That's the reserves from that. They'll pump it maybe three or four hundred thousand barrels a day. And then the pink is their wildest dream. 
Um, so that just gives you an idea. Um, and similarly, it's off the coast of California. It's actually probably maximum uh, uh, that they would get out of that is about five billion. And Anwar probably something maybe a little more than that. So that gives you an idea of when people start talking about all this oil that we have that we haven't. Um, pulled out of the ground. And these are, these, this is the 10 year increments of oil discoveries. This says it all. You're not gonna reverse that trend. Any way, shape, or form are you gonna reverse that trend. Uh, and so here we are, are we eight times happier? Because we have been uh, pulling, we, we are now consuming eight times more oil than we were back in the, um, you know, just those few years ago when I was born. Um, so uh, I don't think that you can say that oil consumption equates to happiness. Are we happier than my grandmother, the little bald-headed girl down here who just had scarlet fever? Um, she lived to be 102. Um, but I can't say that I'm happier than my grandmother was. They still had roads, and they still walked around. They still had communities. They still had coffee houses, whether, whether I'm, sh I'm sure these women are talking about the latest fashions uh, or the boy next door. They still had transportation. And by the way, we had hundreds of, hundreds of thousands of miles of rail at this time, and it was all built with pickaxe and shovel. Uh, we had police officers who rode around on bicycles. Wouldn't that be a concept? We still had Santa Claus. Uh, we still had baseball, by which I could live without. And we still had lovers. Um, we had all that. And our grandparents missed out on so much of this stuff. Isn't this wonderful, all this stuff that they missed out on? Did you know that the storage business in America is now bigger than the motion picture industry? So we're at this fork in the road, and what are we going to do? Uh, we're still in search of the green city. Uh, you know, look behind the, the, the curtain and maybe we'll find what we're looking for. Well, it was there all along. You know, if we just go back in time, we, will, we can see where we have to go forward into the future. We go to Europe just so we can see these wonderful quaint villages and we wonder, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful to live here? I could walk to work. I could walk to the corner market. Uh, here's another one. My uh, niece says she's visited this little town. Uh, but of course, we just can't seem to build it here in America. People walking. It's amazing. Here's Georgetown. Here's a uh, uh, community garden. Uh, we're gonna have to build a lot more community gardens. It's one of the policies we should uh, make sure that we implement because we're gonna need local food production. Here's another one with a bike path next to a train. This is, a f this is the French uh, countryside where they have very small farms and intermixed with all these little villages. You don't have to do things on a massive scale. A parking structure for bicycles. Can you imagine? <laughs> this is Amsterdam, bicycles. Uh, here. Moving stuff with bicycles. It's amazing. You can move a whole house full of stuff on a bicycle. <laughs> you know, we're not going to go back to the Stone Ages just because we have to cur curtail our oil consumption. And by the way, we use twice as much as Europeans do and seven times more than Brazilians. Uh, we, need, we, we need to electrify rail um, more, than, more than anything. And here's something of the, for the future. We should not think that, I mean, we, we need to think outside of where our comfort zone is. And here's a conference that's going to be in Ithaca, New York. Um, if you're up in the expo, go, go take a look at it and talk to Krista Lindstrom, who's also here in the audience. Um, it's a conference that if you're a policy maker, um, uh, an elected official, get your city to go to this thing and, and learn what's possible into the, in the future, in the very near future. Communities are always in transition. This is my city of Huntington Beach, 200,000 people. It's an oil town. And we've transitioned to this in just 50 years. Now, I'm not saying this is necessarily better than the other thing, but we transition. We're always in transition. Don't ever let someone tell you your town is built out. There's no such thing, just as Rome was never built out. But what will we look like in 50 years? Uh, we cannot continue to sprawl like this. This is not sustainable. And so, so that's why this discussion of policy. But I'd like to say the most important thing which um, my nephew Michael shared with me, the most important thing we need to do before we get to the policy is actually something that he's working on with uh, people at the University of Texas, and that is a process for the policy. We get our energy information from so many different agencies, the International Energy Agency, the, Inter the uh, Energy Information Agency, Department of Energy, USGS. So many people have their hand in this pie, and we really don't talk to each other. We need to have a process before we establish the policy. It's important to talk to people, find out what is needed, what's missing. There's so much information that's missing from this energy equation. Um, so these are some of the things that I think are the most important, um, most important things. You can read them. I won't read them. Um, but uh, I thank you very much for inviting me here today. And uh, let's just get this done.